Hey, this is Jonathan Catapano, known as Merchant SVT on social media, and this is my 98 Cobra. So uh, this car was a kind of a cool story how I got this. This car um, really took me on my journey through this whole Mustang thing. Um, you know, everyone really kind of knew me from my Fox body that I was building. It was the, the Termi Fox. I was, uh, you know, I bought that wrecked car, put the Terminator motor in it, and that, that was the car that I was building because that was my first car ever. So I took that car to a shop up in North Carolina, and uh, they chopped the, the whole front end off of it, and we were going through all the fab work of that car, which, you know, like anyone knows, that's a thing that's, you know, oh, it's going to be three months, and it turns into three years. I mean, it's just, you know, it just kind of escalates because for one reason or another, you know, you're always adding things, you hit speed bumps, you know, stuff like that happens. Um, but, you know, one night I was, I was sitting on the couch and that car had been up there for a little while and the owner of the shop called me and asked if I wanted to buy this car. Um, it wasn't in the exact same shape that it's in now, but, you know, it was a really good car and, you know, it was kind of well known through social media. And it's one of those deals I just couldn't pass up at the time. I wasn't really looking for an SN95. And to be honest with you, I didn't really like SN95 cars. I think I was kind of like everybody else. But this car, I mean, just, just the way, it, the, the color of it with the IRS, it just... I don't know, it just kind of spoke to me, and I was like, yes, I do want that car. So long story short, we, we made the deal, and, um, you know, I go up to North Carolina, I test drive it, and uh, I bring the car home, um, which kind of brings me into, like, one of my favorite memories about this car. I have a ton of really great memories, Mustang Week, just the people I've met, you know, Ponies in the Smokies, like all sorts of really cool things I've done with the car. But probably one of my favorite funny memories is – you know, I had never really driven the cars on trailers. I was a big Jeep guy, so I'd always drive Jeeps on trailers, and you can open the door, no problem, in a Jeep. Get this car up on my uh, open trailer, windows are up, turn the car off, you know, I'm looking, making sure everything's ready to go. I go to open the door, bam, hits the, uh, hits the side. I mean, I look, the gap's about this big, I'm this big, I'm like, there ain't no way that's gonna happen. So, try to squeeze through, it's, there's nothing. My buddy's with me, and I was like, hey man, pop the trunk. He pops the trunk, and I literally had to slither and weasel my way over, you know, over and under to get out of the car. So, I just think that's kind of funny, because I had owned the car all of five minutes, and, uh, you know, I was already <laughs> having issues <laughs> getting out of it. I have uh, remedied that problem since. I, I now have an easier way to get in and out of cars. I usually winch them up now, and I have a better trailer, but it's just kind of a fun experience uh, when you get a car. So, word to everybody, when you get a car, make sure you can get out of the damn thing. <laughs> But uh, now this car has been a really cool car. Um, like I said, when I bought it, it was painted, motor was built, drivetrain was in it, um, supercharged, the wheels, IRS, you know, everything. There was mostly everything that was done to it. Thing is, it just didn't have like the carbon fiber hood. It was there was a lot of orange on the car. So when I first got it, I tried to break up all the orange. Um, I'm not even an orange fan really, but orange just works on this car, and I feel like. This car just like kind of brought SN95s like to that front page for me. And a lot of people base their SN95 on this car, which is really, really cool to own a car like that that other people like look up to or try to copy or modify, which I have absolutely no problem with. That's the best compliment you can get is when someone tries to make their car look identical to you. You know you're doing something right when you do that. So I actually appreciate that. I appreciate all the questions on the car. It's just, I don't know, to me, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, but the car had like really no, it had race seats in it. it, like the interior was pretty bare, it didn't even have a back seat in the car. So my buddy Rob that owns a company called The Parts Farm, I hit him up and he had a whole, he had a wrecked 03, 04 Cobra with a dark interior. So I put all dark interior in it, uh, door panels, the rear, it had no rear seat, none of the plastics were in the car. So basically, I think it had a roll cage in it at one point in time. So basically finished out all the interior that was in the car. Um, and then just kind of softened the car up a little bit. It was on a factory computer, replaced everything with Holly, put an air idle control valve in it, the car runs so much better, it has the correct tune now in it. Um, just kind of fine tuning a really good base and just putting my own spin on it just to kind of bring the car up to more current uh, it's not standards, but like technology. Um, you know, upgraded little things like it had just regular Cobra brakes on it. So I put the 2000 Cobra R Brembos on it so they would kind of match. Had those paint, uh, had those powder coated by my buddy um, 
sinus belt, Tom Clark. Everyone probably knows him. He does a lot of custom stuff. Um, and that's really it. You know what I mean? Other than that, I haven't done a ton to the car, but enjoy it, which has probably been my favorite part. Um, you know, a lot of us out there, you got this built versus bought. I've built them and I've bought them. And they're both equally fun. Like, the black car was really fun to build. But there's something about buying a car that's almost built and putting your own touch on it and actually driving it and enjoying it. So I definitely see pluses. I'd probably do both again. So on this car, obviously, it's a... Um, a Vortex supercharged car. It's a uh, Vortex YSI. It's running about 13 pounds. This motor has way more potential um, than I'm actually running it at, but it runs in that 6, 650 range right now, which in my opinion is probably one of the best power ranges for a car that you're just going to drive around town and have fun with. It's making good enough power that it's fun to drive, but it's not scary where, you know, it's going to just fly off the road. Um, so in my opinion, that's, that's the one thing I do love about this car is it's just very easy to drive and it's pretty reliable when the battery works. Um, <laughs> as we saw earlier. But um, now this car, I mean, lots of custom stuff. Obviously, it's got a custom, you know, shaved engine bay, which I think really sets it off. You know, with the powder coated valve covers, that blue and that orange contrast, I think just really pops. But this motor was built from the bottom up. Uh, I mean, forged pistons, ARP everything, you know, everything studded. Custom Todd Warren cams are in this car. Um, I'm trying to think here. Now, we, like I said, I switched it over to Holley EFI. It does have a return style fuel system on it. As you've noticed, this car, in these cars, what, one of the things that really clean this up is it's running an 0304 ignition system. So it actually has the coil packs over the spark plugs, where in these cars you had two packs in the front and it ran the wires everywhere. So that just creates in these cars tons of wiring everywhere, which I think really, really cleaned it up. So it allowed me to run like the smaller tanks, in the car and just really just kind of you know show that engine bay um other than that i mean that's pretty much most of the things that are done to that car to the motor of this car without getting into every single little detail but it is running mac long tubes to a bbk x pipe and then i'm also running the bassani mufflers that are polished on the back of this car Um, everything else under it is just like the black car, all Maxima Motorsports, K-member, control arms, coilovers, you name it. I might have a Maxima Motorsport thing, I guess. I don't know. Um, and then, you know, you go back. It's not, um, it does have sub subframe connectors. Uh, I'm not running a safety loop in this car, but this one does have a T56 Magnum. It's running an RST McLeod, not the RXT. Just because this car didn't need the XT, it's not pushing the power that's required for an XT. Um, then what I think of one of the biggest things that sets this car off is it has a 2003-2004 IRS in it. So it's actually hard mounted. Um, so that means like, you know, there's no bushings holding this one in. It's actually bolted to the frame of the car, which is really, really cool. Um, and then full tilt boogie, everything in the rear, no wheel hop, you know, that's done right. Um, and then it's also running the Glenn's Performance sump tank, very similar to my black car, same exact system. I'm running an external 750, whole return style system to the car. Some of the highlights on the inside of this car, obviously it's got 0304 Cobra interior, um, which is really cool. But I just like that uh, the custom made steering wheel from Redline Goods, just having that flat bottom and then... The 686 screen, I think from Holly fits perfect in these SN95 dashes. You can get people that make a custom bezel for it, like mine. It sits right up there. I actually left mine the raw, I guess, 3D printed. It kind of looks cool. They make a thing that you can actually skin it so you can't see it and it's smooth, but it almost looks like a carbon fiber-y kind of look. So, I don't know. I, I just kind of left it like that. But other than that, you know, there's some carbon fiber pieces that are actually hydro-dipped in that car. It's actually not real carbon fiber. Had a local guy hydro-dip it year ago, years ago and it's actually held up pretty well. But going around the outside of the car, there's a lot of real carbon fiber on it with the exception of the roof. The roof is actually a wrap that me and a buddy of mine did. Um, the hood is from a company called AIT Racing. They don't make that hood anymore. So um, if you do find that hood, definitely buy it um, or let me know. I'll buy it and, uh, you know, because they're going to be harder and harder to find. But other than that, I mean, I had someone custom make the projector headlights for me. We did little carbon inserts on there, which is different. Not a lot of people have done that. And then when you go and walk around the car, I mean, you have carbon driven 
did the little skirts that go underneath uh, the, the little rocker panels, which I think is a huge addition to this car because they're meant for 03, 04 Cobras. And we kind of just figured out a way to bolt them in there to make them work. Then you go to the back of the car and you have that saline wing, which I think is one of the per perfect wings for these cars, just the way it hugs the back of the car. And then it matches the little carbon fiber insert that goes around the license plate. And then, you know, the one thing that's really hard to find is that gas tank cover from Fox Body Composites, which obviously I cut to fit my sump tank, but it just really rounds out the look of all the carbon fiber. I try, when I build these cars, I try to like have the car flow as much as possible. Like you can throw, just because you can buy a part doesn't mean you should, in my opinion. I feel like if you can kind of sprinkle things in and just kind of make them flow around the car, I think that's, you almost want it to make it look like it came from the factory that way. Like, you know, that factory maybe option, in, in my opinion. But really, the IRS with the polished tailpipes is really what sets this car off. Having those 335-inch monsters on the back, I mean, that's what everyone, you know, they love that, that booty shot of this car. That, I mean, that's, when I search the internet, I, like, I see that more of anything from this car. Um, but it is, it's just, it, I think it's what fits this SN. If you get an SN95 stance the right way with the right wheel offset, because from the factory, they sit in really, really they sit in too much. If you can get that car dropped and you can get those wheels pushed out, it just really, it's a beautiful design of this car. I think it just really, you know, brings it to its full potential. So running an 18 by 11 HRE, uh, 547 in the back, they are matte center with a gloss step lip. And then the fronts are 18 by nine. I, like I said, I run a 335, 30 in the back, and then a 275, 35 up front. Um, and then the color, right? I mean, this is not a factory color, and no, it is not competition orange. It is hugger orange, which is the GM color, which I know most people are not gonna like, but honestly, that's another cool aspect of the car that it's a Ford, it's a well-known Ford, and it's got a GM paint coat on it. All right, everybody, thanks for, you know, thanks for spending some time with me. I really appreciate Cobra owners coming down, visiting me here in Charleston, South Carolina, seeing some of my cars. Like, it's been a really cool experience. I love being able to share my journey, you know, so you can hear a little bit more about me, where I've come from, where these cars have come from, where they're going, some of the other builds that I have. Um, it's been a really cool experience. If you guys want to follow me, most of my stuff's on Instagram and YouTube at Merchant SVT. I appreciate any following inputs. I got a couple other cool builds going on. So always trying to do something. So, uh, you know, just like I said, it's been such a cool experience. Uh, thank you once again for staying around for part two. And hopefully in the future we have some more content for you as well.